be the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered in the name of Jesus, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Gracious God, in Christ Jesus you come among us as light shining in darkness. We confess our failure to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our soul, so that we may live in the light of your grace and welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Thank you. 
Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading comes from Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. God commanded Aaron to say these words, <clears throat> known as the Aaronic benediction, in blessing the people of Israel. We too are marked with God's name and God's blessing as we are sent from our assemblies into the world. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Be the second reading is from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. <clears throat> This early Christian hymn, <clears throat> this early Christian hymn points to Christ's self-emptying obedience on the cross as cause for his exaltation by God and worthy of praise by the entire cosmos. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel of creation. <laughs> said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. I'd like to invite any children forward for the children's message. this way and look out and face all of them. Can we do that? All right. There's room for me here. 
and I have to get back up. That's the problem. <laughs> All right, I said something at the beginning of the service about what today is in the church camp. Well, today's New Year's Day, right? Did you stay up until midnight? No. No? I didn't make it either. No. I'm getting too old for that. No, don't stay up till midnight. Maybe when you get older, you might be. So today is a day we think about the name of Jesus. So here's a sheet I have. Let me give you one of these. It has a lot of names of Jesus. Do you think Jesus has any other names that you know of? Yes, Lord God. Um, Christ. Christ, yeah. Um, that's all I know. That's all you know? That's a couple of them. Do you think God has a lot of names? Yeah. Let's see, what can we see on this sheet? The Word, the Good Shepherd. You ever call Jesus, hear Jesus called the Good Shepherd? Bread of life. Bread of life, yeah. Light of star. Morning star. Light of the world. Light of the world. King of Kings. King of Kings. The Lamb of God, the way, the gate, and there's one more on here. Can you read this one? I think it says the vine. It's kind of curly, right? Or cursive. Yeah, that's cursive writing. So, what if I told you this sheet I have has a lot of names for God on it? What do you think about that? Do you think I could say all these names in one breath? No. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Let's see. Abba, Adonai, Advocate, Almighty, Alpha and Omega, Amen, Apostle and Profession, Atoning Sacrifice, Author of Life, Banner, Beginning and End, Bread of God, Bread of Life, Breath of Life, Bridegroom, Capstone, <sighs> and then a breath, and I only got like the letter C on this list. Why do you think these names might be important? So we can call him many different things, and so if we don't know one, we can know others. Absolutely. We can call God by many different names. If we don't know one, we can use one of the other ones. We've got a lot of new names, right? And they remind us of the attributes of God. That's kind of a big word, attributes. You know what an attribute is? Personality, characteristics. Things that describe who God, God is a king, right? He said king of kings. So like the God of shepherds? Yes, the God of shepherds, absolutely. The God of shepherds and of all people. God, like a shepherd, leads us as Jesus calls our name. We hear it like a sheep hears the shepherd's voice. So there are a lot of different names. So think about those names and when you pray, Today, this week, this year, it's a new year, good year to start something new. We can call God by any of these names. And God knows. Do you think God knows our name? I have a name to have. What name do you think God knows you by? Uh, I got no idea. You have no idea? <laughs> well, God knows you by your name, but... There's another name that all of us have, and I'm going to write it on here for you. Child of God. <laughs> Make sense? We are God's children. So you can take that and you can put it on if you want. Child of God. That's what God calls all of us. Pretty cool, huh? All right, I should make one for myself, too. Yeah, the pastor better wear one, too, so everybody knows that I'm a child of God. Cool. Now we know our name, that God calls us, and we know some of the names that we call God, and we know that God is always with us. Thanks be to God. Thanks for coming up. You can go back then. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
children are making their way back up. I'm going to tell you my other announcement, but I forgot. <laughs> um, this week is the Festival of Epiphany um, in the church. You remember that the wise people saw the star and they followed it to where the baby Jesus was. Typically, on the Festival of Epiphany, it's a time when you can bless your home. Anyone ever heard of this? Blessing your home? There's a blessing you can do, and it involves some chalk and writing the year above your door frame with the chalk and saying this prayer of blessing, and it's asking God to bless your home for the year. So I encourage you to do this um, this year. It's a nice practice we can do each and every epiphany. I left some copies on the table out there and on the table over there. So I invite you to bless your home this year for everybody. All right, now I'm getting my other sticker. <laughs> it is the first day of the year, right? Anybody stay up late last night? Some of us <laughs> tried. I made it to uh, New York New Year. That was about it. <laughs> and on New Year's, typically, what do we do on New Year's Eve? Drink, yeah. <laughs> Eat too much. What else do we do at midnight? What do we? What's our habit and practice? Kiss each other. <laughs> what do we do right before midnight? We do a countdown. countdown. A countdown. <laughs> yes. Uh, anybody do a countdown last night? No? Right. I have a sticker for myself. And it says, one day or day one. One day or day one. I'm going to put this over here. Remind myself I'm a child of God and one day or day one. Anybody have your countdown? But well, we also count up, don't we? Day one, it's day one of the year. Day two, sometimes we see a count up of, or a countdown, however you want to look at it. It's been blank days since our last accident or our, the last time somebody in our house said a swear word or whatever you want to say. <laughs> we have these countdowns and count ups. I even have an app for this, believe it or not. I decided that I was going to read this book. I was getting a little bit older and reflecting on my life and this book really convicted me. I read this self-help book because I couldn't help myself. <laughs> this book talked about having a countdown for what we think our life expectancy probably is. And being an actuarial science major back in college, I was like, yeah, I'm all over that. I could look at a life table and guess how many years I have. So you can enter this in an app and see, oh, I think I may have however many thousand <coughs> days left. And that's supposed to be possibly convict you to make the most of each day and do everything you can on this day, looking at it with the day one philosophy. Ugh. But I actually did it. Don't ask to see the pastor's phone. There's a countdown in there. Yes. I have a number of other countdowns to my birthday and things like that. What a good reminder. It could be very healthy. Good reminder for us to live in the moment and seize the day. But at the same time, it bites and stings a little bit. We really don't know how many days we have left. So we are called to make the most of each day of the year and now. The one days and day ones happen repeatedly in our lives. Just think of some of the events 
even in the Christmas story. Think of Mary. One day, she would have this child. This angel came to her. She conceived by the Holy Spirit. She was carrying a child one day. And then it happens in the manger, in the stable. Suddenly there's a child, the Son of God. Day one as a mother. One day as a pregnant woman. Day one as a mother. These happen again and again in our own lives. One day, I'm going to go back to school. One day, I'm going to make that phone call and reconcile with that relative or that friend. One day, I'm going to start that healthy eating plan. One day, I'm going to fill in the blank. What might a Christian healthy New Year's resolution look like for us? And how would it fit into the one day or day one lens when you look at it through that lens? Talk with the children about all the names of God. What if we said each day we're going to meditate on and pray the names of God over my life, over my family's life. What if one day this year I decided that I'm going to serve in such a way, serve God, serve my community, serve the church, we can do this individually or collectively. As a congregation of St. Luke's in Rome, Wisconsin, what are the things we've been telling ourselves? One day we'll expand this ministry. One day we'll do this. One day we'll do that. What if we took the time to truly pray and ponder those one days and ask God how God might be calling us to begin something new. It's a new year. It's a new opportunity each and every day. So if we make resolutions, and they're not all bad, but often they're unattainable or they belittle or demean ourselves because they're unattainable. If our resolutions are doing that, it's probably a sign that it's not a good, healthy resolution. With Christ, each day we have a day one. Each day we have a new opportunity to receive God's blessings and grace and mercy and love. Each day we have an opportunity to go out and spread the good news and share the gospel. How blessed are we? So we may pray the names of God and our reading from Philippians reminds us of how Christ emptied himself to the point of death on a cross. We too are called to give sacrificially of ourselves to empty ourselves so that we may be filled with grace and goodness and light and love on each day, on each day one. 
So we ponder what our day one is and how God is calling us to act. Knowing we are children of God and that God is with us and God will guide us and give us all that we need to accomplish whatever God asks. When we are struggling, when we just can't see the way forward, God is there saying each day is a day one. Whatever happened yesterday, we move forward. I've got you, my child. A practice that I like to participate in each year um, is meditating on a word. Anyone ever done this, gotten a word to meditate on through the year? Anyone heard of this? Well, great, I can introduce you to it. <laughs> I call them star words, and the thought and idea is that you choose a word that I have written on the stars, and that word is the word for you to take with you. You can take one or two, and we understand that the Holy Spirit works through this process, but there's nothing magic about it, that perhaps God has a word for you today on this day one to take with you, to hold in your heart throughout the year. It's amazing to see throughout the years as I've done this, how these have been a blessing and a conviction sometimes, um, and truly a word from God. I'm gonna read you a poem. This is called Star Giving by Anne Louise. What I'd really like to give you for Christmas is a star, brilliance in a package, Something you could keep in the pocket of your jeans or in the pocket of your being. Something to take out in times of darkness. Something that would never snuff out or tarnish. Something you could hold in your hand. Something for wonderment. Something for pondering. Something that would remind you of what Christmas has always meant. God's advent light into the darkness of this world. But stars are only for God's giving. And I must be content to give you words and wishes and packages without stars. But I can wish you life as radiant as the star that announced the Christ child's coming and as filled with awe as the shepherds who stood beneath its light. And I can pass on to you the love that has been given to me, ignited countless times by others who have knelt in Bethlehem's light. Perhaps, if you ask, God will give you a star. You may find that this word, star word, fits you perfectly. If so, celebrate. See how it can be a new, you can be more intentional about sharing this gift with the world. You may find yourself resisting the word or even wanting to reject it. If that's the case, sit with it for a while. Or the source of your resistance. Be open to the word that it will teach you. Live with it, reflect upon it, journal about it, talk about it, share your thoughts. Discover how the word may shine its light on you. Let us pray. God, we acknowledge that we are not always ready to receive your best gifts for us. You have given us epiphany words in order that we might be more it is our habit to turn aside, to stumble over, or even reject experiences and encounters that we later understand 
you have been precious gift. Help us to be open to the gift that you offer us through star words. We acknowledge we do not fully understand what this word might mean for our faith, but we receive it with gratitude. We pray that your spirit will enable us to live into the word with intentionality and faithfulness. Amen. All right, as we sing our hymn of the day, I encourage you to come forward and receive a star. Please stand with your word. Please join in confessing our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving, for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Merciful God, broaden the church's hospitality and welcome. 
Open our hearts to any in need of refuge and help, especially those who are persecuted. Prosper the work of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, restore the health of the soil, the seas, and the air. Increase the joy and praise of all living things. In the coming year, strengthen local, national, and international efforts to prevent further harm to the environment. God of grace, liberating God, deliver your people from cruel oppression. Increase justice in every nation and keep the dream of freedom alive. In this new year, bring the blessing of peace and put an end to violent conflict throughout the world. We pray for these service members, Kristen Bartelt, Michelle Traub, Anthony Church, and we also pray for these concerns of our world and nation today that we name now in our hearts or aloud. God of grace, hear our prayer. Uplifting God, raise all who are bowed down by trouble and need, especially individuals and families living in poverty. Protect and nurture all children. Sustain those who parent teach and care for the young. We especially pray for the family of Wayne Pino. We pray for Eric Johnson, Lydia Blumenberg and family, Marilyn Martin, Sally Ropicki, Rosaline Bonick, God of grace. Amen. Abiding God, accompany this community in the coming year. Increase our love for one another and the neighbors we serve. Enrich our worship and deepen our faith. Sustain our pastor and all who minister in your name. We pray for these St. Luke's members and their families, Susan Rossbach, Ryan and Leslie Lee, Michelle Bartelt, Vic and Lois Fenty, Barry and Pauline Stephan, John and Virgin Lawson, Lori Vogel, Judy Maximin Pino, Gail Siglinski, Mary Jensen, God of grace, <clears throat> loving God, the holy innocents who perish in every generation are safe in your keeping. We give you thanks and praise for all the faithful who have gone before us into everlasting life with you. God of grace, pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. The peace of Christ be with you always. And I'm also with you. We are seeing as we receive the offer. Please stand as you are. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let every heart receive your Savior. You may be seated. <coughs>
Please stand as you In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. On this day, O oh God, you gave us Christ the Son to save us. As you sent the one foretold, send us now with good news for all people. Let the gladness of this feast have no end as we share with others the joy that fills us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this Christmas season and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus. Thanks be to God.